Welcome to the second special edition of Flickering Dreams from the London Film Festival, where I've been interviewing some of the directors from the films showing there. This interview is with Caroline Ingverson, who is the director of a Scandi thriller called Unmoored, which unusually takes the action outside of Sweden to both Poland and the UK. We'll see a clip of the film first, then my interview with Caroline, and then we'll go to the full trailer for Unmoored. This was conducted in a very noisy environment, a sort of round table interviewing session with Caroline. So apologies for the poor audio quality, but hopefully you can make it out. Enjoy. I need to do Welcome to Flickering Dreams. Uh, I'm here with the director of Unmoored, Caroline Ingverson. Have I pronounced that right? Completely correct. Perfectly right. Could you explain to our viewers a little bit about your film Unmoored and how it's structured? Um, yeah, so, my, so Unmoored is a story about Maria, Maria Holonek, who is married to Magnus Holonek, who in the beginning of the film she finds out that he's been accused of rape. And we are more or less seeing her putting a mask on to face the world, where she towards the world are very protective of him and supportive of him. At the same time, she's very much a very judgmental feminist of other women who's not living their authentic true life. Yes. So she's very much a, a complex woman with very double morals. Right, because she's a TV journalist, isn't she? Exactly. And, uh, in, indeed, there's a scene where she actually calls out effectively a battered wife. Exactly, yes. for being, for, she calls out the husband, questioning him and trying to egg on the, like trying to tell the girl like if you have other options. Yes. Because she believes very heartily that there are other ways. Yes. Not seeing that her herself is living in a suppressed marriage. Right. Yes. As, so what what so after, with this media frenzy going on and then they're being questioned of him husband being questioned of rape, they decide to go on a sabbatical towards Marrakesh or do it to Marrakesh, but they stop in Poland and on this journey she starts questioning him what he really have done, what he's capable of doing. Yes. And in that confrontation um, an impulse decision makes her go to England where she always wanted to go. Right. And once she arrives to England she what what she experienced in that with Thomas becomes to haunt her. Yes. And slowly and surely we find out through flashbacks of sorts, we find out what happened between her and her. Right. And he was she at the same time find her herself in the middle. Yes, yes. It was quite unusual I thought as a um, let's call it a Scandi movie. Yeah. For it to be based in so many different locations and, and featuring England. Was it the North Yorkshire Moors? Is that where? Oh yeah. no, no, uh, I think Exmoor, is it? Exmoor, yes. Sorry. I thought it was the North Yorkshire Moors from yeah. the landscape and then there was a reference to Exmoor. I thought, yeah. No. Okay. That, that, that was quite unusual to, it to was have that location. It's very unusual, but it's because it's all based on the book. Okay. Living in Desert Winsford, right. book and less the writer, he spent time in Exmoor and in this area when he wrote the book. Yes. So it was very important for us to to return to Winsford, to return to the area yep. where we live in the moors. Yes, yes, okay. The, the whole background revolves around Maria, I mean, we, we, we have to be spoiler free here. Uh, but there's a, a certain sense in which you wonder about the rationale of and the mental state of Maria in the film. Yeah. Um, to what extent do you think that Maria was hiding from the, the truth of what was happening yeah. in the film? 
Because I, for me, uh, it's a very interesting point that you're making. For me, I, I personally fall in love with the idea of music. So for me, that I really wanted to explore that. Yes. So and um, because for a while we as an audience don't know what's going on either, but then eventually, as the more she loses her mind, the more clear it becomes for us yes. that she's losing the plot, and it becomes two different parts. Like yes. before that, we were all on the same path, and then it goes like a fork. Yes, it does. And and when you get to the end of that uh, journey, yeah, it seems quite obvious. The way it was going to go. Yes. You've been you've been involved in Maria's mind exactly. up to that point. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That was kind of what I, I thought. And, it, and your um, star, I won't try to pronounce her name. Media you know, Thank you. You just did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she she was exceptional. It, what, what she'd been in before, and, and how was she cast for that? Yes. Yeah, so she's been in a lot of films in Sweden and English speaking films as well. But she was this girl in the Dragon Two, the Swedish version. Oh yeah. Uh, on a big, like medieval, a big, quite big film on. And she's been, and now uh, I think it's called, she's on a Netflix series, Shattering uh, Glass. Anyway, but she's she's a really, really amazing actress. Yes. And we've been in the industry for a long time, but maybe haven't always, haven't been given that leading role. Yes. So I'm just so happy that we we found each other. Yeah. Because I could not have done this film without her. No. She's like she carries the film on her shoulder. Yeah, she does indeed. She, um, she's just about in every single scene in the film. Every scene. She filmed every day. She didn't have one day off. Right. <laughs> so it was what was the sort of shooting period? So we shot for 30. Yes, yeah, so we shot in two countries. Yes. So mainly in Poland and then the exterior in the UK. Right. Um, so I think it was 32 days, maybe, yeah, 32 to 3 days. Right. But then with like time in between where we had to travel with the team to go to England and then yes. travel within Poland. We had three massive unit moves within Poland in itself. Right. Like from Wuch to, to the coastline, I guess. Yes. Huge, huge that, that coastline looked very cold. Was it cold yeah. when you filmed there? And no, I remember I was annoyed about the leaves. <laughs> so, so, but it was very similar time of the year as now. Right. So okay. it was, it was. Cold. It was getting chilly. Yeah. It, it looks a lot colder. Yeah. I think you used a blue, blue yeah. tint on the, yeah. uh, on the cinematography in order to make exactly. it look cold. But I felt cold. <laughs> cold. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely supposed to feel cold, especially when later on. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's uh, that's great. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I very much enjoyed the movie. So. Um, yeah, so best of luck with it. Do, do you know if it's getting a UK release? Soon? I don't know yet when and where, but I'm. Um, yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, you so time. much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We've been married for 27 years. I believed everything is said. Du behöver en paus. Det är lugnt. Du ska inte vara känslig i snart. Det här har varit skönt för oss bägge två. Vi behöver det. Oh my god! Don't you feel trapped? You work, but still you cannot choose where you are going. Kan inte du bara enda gång släppa det? Magnus! Stanna då! I just need a little time. Are you married? Yes. I mean, no. We, 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 we're separated. Fakta är inte allt, Maria. Det handlar om hur man tolkar det. Hon kommer inte ha chans ändå. I know there's something wrong. Det är aldrig något vapen, eller hur? Så behöver jag ställa några frågor.
en ska vara hårfin. Ibland vet man inte när man passerar den. Thank you so much for listening or watching Flickering Dreams. You can find the video version on YouTube and the audio version on all major podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get each of the weekly episodes as they are released. We'll see you at the movies.